All people everywhere looking to Jesus Christ. All eyes being on Jesus Christ. That is what God wants. That is the house that God is building in these last days. That is the work of God in these last days. Jesus is Lord. Um, here at the abortion clinic. Um, women's health clinic. Um, whole women's health. But um, this alleyway right here is where they, um, they, so they park in the back and then they have a security guard walk them through this alleyway here and then they walk around into those doors right there. And so it's a nice little opportunity to share God's love. Uh, Jesus loves you and he has a plan for you. He has a plan for your life. He died to save you. He died to save you of your sins and give you a new life. Esperanza in the name de Jesus. There's hope for you. There's new life for you in Jesus. All you have to do is call upon him. He doesn't hate you. He loves you. He died for you. Jesus shed his precious blood for you. And so, we, um, I'm not here to talk anybody out of getting an abortion. I mean, you can't do that, right? Like, you don't even know what you're going through. I'm not justifying abortion. I, it's innocent blood and God's judgment is coming because of abortion. I'm just saying, you can't talk somebody out of getting an abortion. Um, but you can introduce them to God who can deliver them from all of their brokenness uh, that would lead them to go and get an abortion. So, um, you know, the Catholics, you know, they're very zealous, you know, and, you know, they're here and I just, where are the Christians at? You know, this is the only abortion clinic south of San Antonio, and that's a lot of territory, and, um, you know, just need the, the church to wake up, you know, need the church to wake up and, and be in the action, you know. We're, we're needed most. You know, good news is preached to the poor. Liberty is proclaimed to the captives. You know, the hearts of the brokenhearted are bound up, you know, healed, mended. And that, that's what needs to happen, friends. We need to just get out of our luxury Christianity. Luxury Christianity, death to it. Death to luxury Christianity. That's my message today. Death to luxury Christianity. Hallelujah. Repent, call upon Jesus Christ. So, so when, when, when I say that the end of luxury Christianity, we're at the end of luxury Christianity, what am I saying? Look at Haggai chapter 1 verse 2. Thus says the Lord of hosts, This people say that the time has not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord. Then the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet. Is it a time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses while this house lies in ruins? Go up to the hills and bring wood and build the house that I may take pleasure in it and that I may appear in my glory, says the Lord. You have looked for much and lo, it came to little. And when you brought it home, it blew away. Why, says the Lord of hosts, because of my house that lies in ruins while you busy yourselves each with his own house. You see that? That is luxury Christianity. It's when... Christians are more concerned with their own affairs than the affairs of God. And, you know, this luxury Christianity that the American gospel enterprise is, uh, it doesn't produce uh, zeal for God's house. It doesn't produce zeal for God's mind, for God's ways. And so, um, you know, that... That's, that's just what we're talking about. We're talking about the, the transition from building our own houses and worrying about our own affairs to building the house of the Lord and being concerned about what he's concerned about. And I'll tell you what he's concerned about. He's concerned about his son. He's concerned about Jesus Christ having the preeminence in and among us, in us and among us, and in our midst. And so it is a time to build. This is a time to build. And what, is that, what does that mean? Go to Ephesians. In verse 8, it says, When he ascended on high, he led a host of captives, and he gave gifts to men. This one. Verse 11, And his gifts, okay, so Christ gave gifts to men. And his gifts 
verse 11, were that some should be apostles. So what we see is that this ministry, apostleship, prophets, teachers, evangelists, shepherds, this comes from Christ. Christ gives these gifts to his church. And his gifts were that some should be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. For the equipment of the saints, for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. What, what is it to build? It is to edify the body of Christ. That is the building that God is after. That is the type of work that God is after. He's, he's trying to build us up, verse 13, until we all, every single one of us, all attain to the unity of the faith. We've, we're so far from this. We are so far from the unity of the faith. What is the unity? Of the, what does that even look like? John 17, Father, make them perfectly one. There was no schisms and isms and divisions between Paul and Peter and Apollos and Cephas, uh, and um, you know Aquila and Priscilla and Titus and Timothy. There were no schisms and isms and oh he's a Baptist, oh he's a Pentecostal, he believes in this. He believes. There was none of that. There was Jesus. Jesus. They all had a love for Jesus. It was Him. They understood that if He be at the center, not just in word, but in spirit and in truth, if He be at the center of our gatherings, if He be at the center of our conversation, Everything else will fall in place. We're so far from the unity of the faith. Because we follow men and their traditions and their schisms and isms and doctrines versus the doctrine of God, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus himself is the doctrine of God. Jesus himself is the full witness of God. And any teaching, any form, standard of teaching that doesn't, bring us to the person of Christ, it can even talk all about Jesus. We can talk all about Jesus, but if we're not coming to the person of Jesus himself in the spirit, by the spirit, then it's, it's a false doctrine. It's the doctrine of the Assyrians. It's the doctrine that doesn't truly bring forth godliness, only a form of it. And that's dangerous Christianity. That's luxury Christianity. And that's where America is right now. Verse 13, until we all attain, okay, this is corporate, across the board, all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. That is what God is after. Knowledge of the Son of God. Not head knowledge, which puffs up. Inward knowledge, revelation knowledge that transforms us. Jesus Christ is God's mystery, hidden from from beginning of time. It even says of, of, of Adam that he was a foreshadow of him who was to come. Adam in the garden was a foreshadow of Jesus Christ. God has always been thinking about Jesus. God has always been jealous for Jesus. God's endorsement has always been upon Jesus. Not on a ministry, not on a church name, right? Like we're the church uh, and individual uh, members and gatherings, but there's one church, there's one body, but we're all members. Man, the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, knowing Jesus, knowing Him inwardly by the Spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him. That is what God is after. So, back to it being a time to build, Ephesians 4. So that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the cunning of men, by their craftiness and deceitful wiles. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into Him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, every denomination, every little movement of Christians, joined and knit together by every joint by which it is supplied. When each part is working properly, makes bodily growth and up builds itself in love. The body builds itself up in love. That is the work. Building the body of Christ in love. Building up. What are we building up into? Into Christ who is the head. Christ coming forth in you and through you. Building you up. Christ building you up. Brothers and sisters, these are the walls that need to be rebuilt. This is the house that needs to be rebuilt. As it says in Haggai, flipping all over here, build the house 
that I may appear in my glory. God wants to come back. God wants to appear to his people in glory, but he will not. He cannot because the house is, is in ruins. It's in ruins. We're all divided. We're all segregated. We're all high-minded and puffed up, each one of us with our own little niche doctrines and our own little you know, revelation on what Christianity is and what God wants. And we just gather people after ourselves instead of all people everywhere looking to Jesus Christ, instead of all eyes being on Jesus Christ. That is what God wants. That is the house that God is building in these last days. That is the work of God in these last days. Yes, it is to believe upon Jesus Christ. And out of that, um, and the outworkings of our believing upon him will be to, to put him forth, to bring him forth, to call, to call all people to behold him all eyes on Christ behold the lamb who takes away the sins of the world behold him Peter says as you look at this look at first Peter okay if you think I'm saying this on my own terms no this is what the scriptures teach first Peter chapter 2 come to him to that living stone rejected by men but in God's sight chosen and precious and like living stones be yourselves built into a spiritual house as you come to him as we come to him we are being built that is it that is ministry It's building up the body of Christ into Christ Christ being formed in you Christ being formed in me through Christ in me coming forth to you you Christ in you coming forth to me Christ is all in all he must be he must increase we must de decrease every other name must bow every other ministry must bow Jesus must increase and that's it that is what God is after and that is what we must be after that is what we must devote ourselves to in these last days is rebuilding the house of God rebuilding the walls that are broken down as, as it was in Nehemiah's day, rebuilding, recovering the testimony of Jesus himself in a people, among a people, in our midst, not just talk about him, not just teachings about him, no, Christ himself, we being in him, him being in us and among us and everything all the time, just being about him and in him, listening to his voice, obeying his word, that is what it's about, that is where God has taken us, so get on board with the eternal purpose of God, get on board with the eternal eternal purpose of God to sum up all things in his son, Jesus Christ.